Japan's Rakuten Mobile has been in the mobile networking spotlight for several years and with its virtualized 4G and 5G architectures and next-gen operations, it's playing a significant role in challenging the status quo in the global cellular market. To get the latest developments from the challenger operator and as part of our focus on the 5G radio access network, I'm talking today with Tarek Amin, Group CTO at Rakuten Mobile. So, Tarek, can you give us an update on where Rakuten Mobile is with its network rollout in Japan? Ray, um, at the early inception of our network build-out, we have set three pillars of strategic objectives for Rakuten Mobile. One is to build an end-to-end -end cloud native architecture, including Open RAN. Um, second is around mass scale automation. And it, third is in enablement of elasticity and auto healing into the fabric of our network. And of course, all of these technology enablement, from my perspective, don't mean a whole lot if we don't build coverage. So we have uh, put our energy to fast track our build for both 4G and 5G. We have announced previously that we have accelerated, accelerated the 5G build out by almost five years. And in fact, we are absolutely on track to deliver 96% of population coverage of Japan by September of this year. And similar to what we have done to 4G, we are now in the process of fast tracking and accelerating our millimeter wave deployment as well as sub six in Japan. Now, as you mentioned, Rakuten is offering 4G and 5G services. Is this all being delivered over the same radio access infrastructure? Uh, absolutely. So Ray, our strategy maybe was uh, slightly unique. Um, what we have focused our energy on is the diversification of our hardware supply chain, whether it is products for macro, products for massive MIMO, products for indoor and femto. Now, uh, now across all of these platforms and products, the software stack that is managing the radio access is common, and it is common for both 4G and 5G. And it's, it is common in the essence that its baseband is fully cloudified. It sits on our edge data center. Today, our 5G uh, has a bit more advantage than what we've done in 4G. Uh, in fact, it is completely disaggregated, decomposed and cloud native sitting on Rakuten RCP platform. Now, as many people know, Rakuten Mobile has been at the forefront of open RAN developments. How has this disaggregated architecture approach helped you to achieve your goals? I think I, I had, uh, for me personally, a, a couple of key initiatives that we wanted to push. I think in the context of our network, we knew that to enter Japan as a fourth mobile operator, we had to be disruptive in our cost structure and we had to be disruptive in our architecture and we had to be disruptive in our service agility to deliver new age services to our customers. We know that we had to compete very hard, especially on the cost and economics for uh, building, engineering, and architecting uh, modern platforms. Uh, Open RAN plays a huge factor to this strategy. Um, uh, I believe if you look globally, uh, between 60 to 80% of CapEx spend in mobile operators is spent on radio access. Disaggregation of this technology is critical. I always say this is about a journey towards demystifying the architecture of radio access. Um, for us, it, it, we could not be uh, any more happier about the results that we have seen. And what impressed us the most is not just necessarily about the disaggregation. It's the benefits that you get with uh, automation, the benefit that you get with zero touch provisioning, and the benefit that you get to re-enable new platform architecture and even new organizational structure to run and manage networks of the future. Now, would you say that Rakuten Mobile's 5G network is a blueprint for what other operators could build out? And how close does it conform to ORAN Alliance specifications? Uh, Ray, I, I would hope so. I would hope that uh, obviously Rakuten alone um, cannot create this journey by ourselves. A larger collaborative ecosystem is needed to see what we see every day and to see the opportunity. One thing I could tell you for certainty, I have talked to um, a large number of CXOs 
in the large in the last 15 months of operation rocket and mobile network we had a lot of very healthy debate and discussion and i believe we all converged to the idea that this blueprint architecture of what we have built have merits and it is the right architecture to run and, and build um, uh, both brownfield and greenfield networks uh, on. Um, uh, you know, I think now um, the remaining points is to see more adoption globally, to see more uh, creation of this ecosystem. We are absolutely compliant to ORAN uh, standards. Um, we are in fact a part of the board of ORAN Alliance and very committed to support uh, the journey and the standardization that are needed to drive this technology and, th and make it thrive across a larger ecosystem. Our 5G network, in fact, if you look at what we've done with Massive MIMO, um, follows all the specification that was, uh, that was done and ratified by the uh, ORAN forum and community. So we hope that this will become the blueprint for the larger ecosystem. We hope that uh, collaboration between Rakuten and, and other mobile operators could be realized to advance the adoption of ORAN across their infrastructure. Now, how is the Open RAN ecosystem developing? Are, are you seeing accelerated innovation from the global R&D sector? You know, the thing that I'm really delighted about, uh, I think if you look 12 months ago, um, you know, the, the whole industry was in debate, debate whether this platform works, can it scale? Does it work in urban area? Does it deliver on the same performance and capability that uh, traditional macro base stations do? And I really believe that we have now passed the stage, the stage of debate, to the stage of understanding what needs to happen and what are the remaining gaps for adoption, not only in Greenfield, but also Brownfield. Um, I am delighted to see not only for private acceleration or adoption of the idea of open RAN, but also government involvement towards open RAN has been extremely uh, delightful for us to see, whether it is in Japan, UK, Germany, United States, we're seeing some amazing progress towards enablement of this industry. I really truly believe that the ecosystem and the industry as a whole is starting to realize the benefits and the advantages of running a software network and what that could mean to future autonomy into the fabric and the DNA of the platform uh, of future mobile networks. So what should the industry be focused on in terms of open RAN innovation? What needs the most focus right now? So Ray, I think uh, it is no doubt that the industry as a whole have done a really great job at rallying um, a group of operators to define uh, standards that uh, vendors uh, could start building hardware against and then software architecture to be uh, able to deliver it against these hardware. However, in, in my view, I think now it's time to start thinking about an idea of taking the ideas and validation of Open RAN from the labs to real production network, not just only in Japan, but across the world. And even if it's a small clusters of trial, it would give the operator community the ability to validate the readiness of the software architecture, the ability to validate compliance to 3GPP features, uh, ability to validate maybe deployment model versus legacy deployment models. I really would love to see far more production adoption of Open RAN. And I think that the industry as a whole has finally started to put a lot of great momentum about discovering uh, new hardware platforms, but I would really suggest that the time to validation and production environment is now, the time to look at an opportunity to uh, investigate the advantages of open RAN software architecture in real commercial network is maybe the, the, the thing that the whole industry need to uh, rally towards um, and uh, really the rest, I think, are going to fall in place once people start to experiment and uh, validate and trial beyond lab environment to carry commercial traffic uh, over open RAN networks. Lots of development there for the industry to do. Um, Tarek, what do you want to see next in terms of overall radio access network developments? Well, I think uh, what I'm hopeful and optimistic to see is a, a, another uh, whether a Grandfield or Brownfield operator 
that is going to adopt this platform architecture that continues to validate it, not in the labs, but go into production, test and validate and help participate in the journey of creation of the software, not only on the cloud architecture, but also the, uh, the automation framework that we need to do to deliver on zero touch provisioning, life cycle management and auto healing uh, for open RAN. I think the more that we collaborate, the more that we see such use cases gets deployed into production and we move out of labs into real production environment, I do believe this is very good for the industry and for the entire ecosystem. I have no doubt that you're gonna see the creation of a diversified supply chain across of Europe, across uh, United States and other geographies that are gonna embrace and adopt um, you know, the, the creation of open RAN hardware and software for the better good of the ecosystem. Well, I think there's no doubt that we're starting to see uh, the very beginning of those changes. And there's no doubt as well that Rakuten Mobile has been a real catalyst for that. Thanks very much for the update and insights. Great to talk to you as always, Tarek. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ray. Pleasure being with you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.